Hi, I'm Amy. Welcome to the video. Hey guys, today's video is going to be a three day wear test on the L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Serum Foundation Sunscreen. These names just keep getting longer, don't they? Okay, it has a broad spectrum SPF of 50 with antioxidants and concentrated serum. I have the shade Ivory 10. This is a chemical and a physical exfoliant. It has homosalate, oxalosalate, octocrylene, and titanium dioxide. Um, so if you are sensitive to chemical sunscreens, uh, beware. So I want to look up on the website here kind of what it says finally makeup specially designed for mature skin age perfect by l'oreal radiant serum foundation is carefully formulated foundation that provides your skin with vitamin b hydrating serum while also being suitable for sensitive skin which is weird because it has a chemical sunscreen in it Natural radiant coverage that doesn't settle into lines. All the benefits of a radiant foundation with the added advantage of hydration and SPF 50. Yes, it has SPF 50, but please still wear your SPF. Okay, you need your own thick layer that has already settled before you go blending this on top of it and then blending other things on top of it. You have no clue. This might be 50 F SPF here, but you know on my nose is it any more 50 SPF? I don't know. So just make sure you are using an SPF with it no matter how much SPF it says that it has. It's tested under dermatological control and it's considered non-comedogenic. That's good. So I do have acne prone skin, but I do take a prescription for my acne. Um, but as you can see, I still get it from time to time. It is one fluid ounce and it is in a squeeze tube like so. I don't hate this kind of packaging but I don't love it. It is, it's not like so liquidy that it falls out of here but it is a little bit thin um, so you could easily squeeze out too much and I do, uh, one thing that kind of has, I didn't know it would drive me crazy um, but this lid is so lightweight that it's like hard somehow to get it on here like if it were just a little bit more dense i would like it a little bit more because this is kind of heavy and this this is like a cap of a water bottle it's very very lightweight um so if it were just a little bit heavier i feel like it'd be easier to go on and off especially if you were like pour it on your hand and you're like trying to balance i found that a little bit difficult Anyways, today is going to be a three-day wear test on this foundation. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, then just keep watching. All right. I watched Taylor Wynn's video about this uh, foundation, and she recommended to use the e.l.f. Poreless Putty with it. So I'm going to do that. Mostly on my the center of my face. Uh, she didn't recommend only there, but that's just where I would put it. You know, poor less, buddy. Okay, so I got mine in the shade Ivory 10. And I think there's one right above this called Rose Ivory, if I remember correctly. And it probably would have been a more perfect match to me since I do have a leaning pink kind of undertone um, but that one was not available at Ulta that was only available at the actual the L'Oreal website and I didn't want to do that because I was already ordering something from Ulta I'm gonna put some of this on the back of my hand it comes in like a little squeeze tube see this is like I don't even know what you would call a drop actually I mean it's it's not thick but it's not runny at all I don't know if you can even see it hold on <laughs> I will have to change that in a second but I'm gonna put probably more than that I don't know this is weird because it's like not how much is how much is a pump in a squeeze tube depends on how much you're squeezing out so I've got like two peas almost a nickel size drop 
And I'm going to do one side of my face with a brush and one side with a sponge. I'm going to go ahead and do the brush on this side since I do have more to cover up. And I always put it directly on the zipper. Oh, that has a scent, but I can't figure out what it is. Okay. So that was like about half of my little. And I'm using the e.l.f. Blurring Foundation brush, which is one of my favorite foundation brushes. Oh, it smells like sunscreen. It's because there's SPF 50 in this. I was like, that's familiar. But it's not like a coconutty one. It's like a, it's almost like a um, tanning lotion that has sunscreen in it kind of scent. I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird that I couldn't tell that right away. Well, I mean like, there's some radiance here. And the color is okay. You can see, I am i don't know if you could tell. But I do feel like I, it is a little bit more yellow than me but it's fine the shade's fine i have like a lot on my brush as you can see it's like not since it's so like emollient and liquidy and hydrating it's like not sticking i feel like with the brush as much like to my face i feel like it's kind of sitting on my face waiting to be blended in i don't know if you can See how it's kind of covered up my zit here? If I like it just comes directly off. It's not interested in staying there. So that's fun for me. So that is the brush side. I would say it has pretty good coverage. It just doesn't have good like sticking power. So I feel like if you're trying to cover scars or uh, freckles, it would be fine. But like active acne or healing acne, I'm not sure. So I'm going to wipe everything that's on my hand onto this sponge and just go I definitely know that the way that I applied that was gonna give me less coverage because I put it on with the sponge so I gave it more time to dig into the sponge you know but it for sure looks way more blended into the skin with the sponge than the brush but obviously there's more coverage here but if you can see it's really not blended into my skin so i'm gonna like look at my nose can you see that I'm go over everything so yeah going over that for sure i think is necessary i'm gonna take what's left on the brush here and kind of build that up a little bit and blend it here. I think it's just easier to blend down your neck with a brush. I just feel like this side needs like a little bit more. So I'm gonna take just a drop and go over my redness here, a little right above my forehead and a little right in there. And maybe just whatever is left here. Okay. So it's definitely hydrating. It actually looks a lot like um, what my skin looks like after I put on my SPF. So it's really giving me that radiant, just put on SPF look, um, if you're into that. Now I have made the mistake of using that retin-a again so my skin is peely which is what happened before the alma beauty foundation review if you haven't seen that i will link it here um so the majority of my face looks really nice really skin like really smooth uh, really like almost plump in like a good way not in a like does she eat too many cookies and but if you look at my nose my nose is an absolute wreck i'm gonna see if i can zoom in and see if I can figure this out. Do you see? Do you see this? My skin clearly wants to peel off. And the foundation is like, let me outline that for you. Oh, let me zoom out because this is crazy. 
wrong way. I think this is about where we were. If not, I'm so sorry. I did not keep track of that. I just zoomed in. Um, so we're going to stay here, but it doesn't matter because we applied most of the foundation. So if we were closer, it was better than right. So I am going to put on the rest of my face. When I see my skin peel like this, it makes me want to go get tweezers and just like peel, peel it off. But, you know, I'm not going to do that because we're going to finish this. So I'm going to go put on the rest of my makeup and I will be back to show you what it looks like and give you my first impressions. Okay, and here is my finished look. The makeup has a really, really nice, like, I would say satin kind of vibe to it. I would not call this dewy or glowy. I would definitely call it more like skin-like and more of like a satin look. As you can see, it does have like reflect to it, but like the highlight is here, you know, like where the light is hitting. Um, but like down here, you're not seeing any glow. You know what I mean? I wouldn't call it overly glowy. I definitely think either my skin is just really, really dry and soaking up all the hydration, or you would be able to wear this with oily skin. I did um, powder very lightly using my Rimmel uh, powder just because it's in my project pan. I'm trying to get rid of it. <laughs> um, so I did powder um, just with a huge fluffy brush nothing crazy um and obviously that's like a pressed powder so it's not like i can pick up too much of it and i did use a liquid blush the juicy pang blusher for my eyeshadow i used the um pure x raw beauty christie i just used my whole heart and copper boxes for the entire thing and then for the lips because i think that's the only other thing you would be curious about. <laughs> I used this Burt's Bee Matte Lip Crayon in Redwood Forest. It's a really nice like brick color and it's called matte, but it's it's more like it's like a lipstick consistency. It's kind of creamy. Um, but <laughs> none of that even matters. Let's talk a little bit about my thoughts so far, my first impressions. I think it looks really nice it looks really smooth and i don't think it looks like cakey in any way but like i said i do have some peeling on my nose and you can definitely see that um i did put my concealer over that to see if my concealer would help mask it a little bit and i do think it masked it a little bit but you can definitely still see it so i don't i don't want to blame this foundation for that um, definitely I will be exfoliating before <laughs> days two and three and my final review. Um, but right now, I mean, I really like the color. I think that looks like really nice, especially for winter. Like I'm not going to get any darker than this, you know? I don't know. I, I think I like it so far. And the poreless putty looks really, really good underneath it. Like I don't think any of my pores are like overly exaggerated. You can see them because they exist. But it does look very smooth and it doesn't look, you know, too reflective in here, which is where it can look like greasy on me, even though I'm pretty dry. Um, but so far, I think that looks really good. What do you guys think? But, um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and live the rest of my life today and I will insert a clip at the end of the day. You know how I do, right? If you've seen one of these before, I do a three day wear test. So I'll do today is day one where you've got my first impressions. It will show you the end of the day and then I'll show you beginning and end of day two and three. And then I will show you um, like a little talk through final review on my final thoughts over the last basically week of wearing the foundation. Um, So far, I kind of like it. And I also, over the next few days, I will wear it differently. So today I wore it with the poreless putty. Tomorrow I might wear it with something more moisturizing, like the Smashbox Primerizer. One day I might wear it with nothing underneath it, just to kind of gauge how I would prefer to wear it and how it really works. And that's why I like to do three-day wear tests. But yeah, I will see you guys um at the end of the day and then at the end of the week. <laughs> All right, so this is about a week later. I have worn this foundation quite a few times. I did film the end of day one, 
the beginning and end of day two, the beginning and end of day three, and then this is technically my fourth day wearing it. On the second day, I wore it with my Summer Fridays jet lag mask, and then on the third day, I wore half of my face with the e.l.f. putty primer, which is what Taylor Wynn suggests how she suggests to wear it. And then the other half of my face, I wore the Smashbox Primerizer, which is a primer that I know and love because I have dry skin and it's a nice, light, moisturizing primer. Today, I will tell you, I am using the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. That was my favorite moisturizer or primer to put underneath this foundation. I found that with the um, e.l.f. Putty Primer, it did actually smooth out the pores on my face and it did look really nice um, but it broke down a little bit more kind of in the crease of my lip and I did use it like on the whole side of my face so I could really see what it was doing and what parts of my face liked it. So I would say if I were going to use it, I would probably only use it in this flat part of my face that doesn't have any wrinkles. Um, but down here it definitely wore out. I'll put in the pictures because I'm just, I'm just talking. No. So, okay, we got the end of day one. the beginning of day two. End of day two. Beginning of day three. And the end of day three. It didn't sink into my smile lines very much, but it did break up at my smile lines. So depending on how, how you feel about that, if your smile lines are a big deal to you. Um, so it did do that and it did start a, to kind of gather on my upper lip, which is a kind of weird thing that doesn't happen very often. But overall, I think it looks really nice. It would be a really good everyday foundation, especially because it has SPF 50. Now that SPF 50 means it does have a scent to it. So if you are like, get headaches very easily or something like that, that might be an issue. But it doesn't linger very well. It kind of dissipates after uh, just a couple minutes one of blending it out. But I do really enjoy the color of this and the finish of this. I did not fully set it. I am wearing like some powder products, powder blush, um, powder bronzer and all that. Um, but I only set underneath my eyes, around my nose, and a little bit on my chin. But it gives a really nice everyday radiant kind of look. So I do like it for that. As you can see, it is not full coverage though. Like you still see this scar here. Um, this is a mole, but you can really see it. Um, I know some of my foundations cover it up, but yeah, you can see a little scar here, a little scar here. And I just put this on maybe like 30 minutes ago. So it hasn't been on, it's not wearing off or anything, but I do love the, the finish of it. And I love that it has the SPF 50. I do think it would be, and it's, and it's really affordable. I think it would be a great, everyday type of foundation especially if you have drier skin i don't know 
if this would work on more oily skin because of how radiant it is unless you have oily skin and you enjoy a dewy finish um you could definitely powder this and, and prep your skin if you have oily skin um be, but because of the radiance i would say more towards the normal to dry skin and i believe i did wear it like eight hours and ten hours and ten hours so it does have pretty long wear without completely wearing off of your face i know that sometimes i have foundations that like you, you i have no coverage on my face anymore afterwards or it just like really settles and and really starts to like pool in certain areas where i'll have like no foundation here but a big blob of foundation here so i do think it wore really nicely and i have worn it underneath a mask and i i don't fully set my face and i didn't find it was anything too crazy you know you could just like after you're wearing your mask just like kind of pat that in and it worked really well i would say overall i could recommend this foundation if you were looking for something drugstore dewy every day with spf this is not a favorite foundation but i do think it looks really nice especially like on the camera i think it looks really nice and like smoothing on my face you know i i really enjoy it but you know when you put on like your favorite foundation and you're like this one this one is my favorite this one doesn't do that for me it's really nice it's really good i don't have any like major qualms with it or anything um or issues and i've been wearing it all week and i have not like gotten extra acne or any like zits or whiteheads pop up um no milia or anything weird like that um so i don't think my skin which i find is i consider my skin sensitive i didn't see any negative reactions so i would say if you have sensitive skin it would be approved even though it does have the spf in there and i believe it is a chemical spf if i remember correctly i don't know i don't remember anyways my final thoughts on this foundation i like it I think it'll be really good for these drier months. Even though it has SPF 50, guys, still wear your SPF. Sun damage is the number one cause of aging. So this is kind of marketed to more mature skin. And since I found it, like, breaking up at my smile lines, and I wouldn't say I have, like, the world's biggest smile lines, um, but I did find that it broke up around my smile line. So I don't know how this would be if you had super harsh smile lines or like uh little wrinkles around your lips or anything like that i didn't find it did anything to i have like the little 11 situation happening here i didn't find it was too bad there but i did find if you can see from here it kind of breaks up around my smile lines so i don't know about that but i know that taylor Wen enjoyed this i know that jessica braun enjoys this she loves a good everyday kind of foundation um, and Andrew Rose really enjoyed it. And I, I, I really enjoy it. I don't love it. I don't love it. But once I stop using it, if I miss it, then I'll know. <laughs> but I have been using it all week and I really do enjoy it. It's, I only use like maybe like a pea size amount for my entire face. I don't think it's one that loves to be built up on itself. It will do that, but because of how it broke up around my, um, my lines I don't feel like I personally would build it up or try to get like full coverage out of it but as an everyday foundation I really really enjoyed it and that's all I have for you guys today thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up it helps me so much subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video bye